trembling with fear. Ten-year-old Faye Jackson darted out of her bedroom and down the stairs to her mom. She had just seen the wispy image of a person who had hissed into her ear, "'Can you hear me?' It was the first of hundreds of ghost sightings that would plague the young girl and lead her to believe she may have psychic powers. Incredibly, Faye's younger brother, Ashley, has now started reporting similar eerie sightings, despite not knowing anything about Faye's. Their mom, Lynn, has come to accept her kids have supernatural powers and that, just like the movie The Sixth Sense, her children can see dead people. To Lynn, by the way, not really her name, we've changed the names in this to protect them, Lynn says this is anything but a special gift. She sees it as a curse that she would love to break. The 39-year-old from Waltham Cross, Hertz, says, It feels like someone's bullying my children and I can't do anything about it. It would have been easier to deal with if they had an illness. At least I'd know where to go for treatment. Faye's got used to it, and now she enjoys having this ability, but Ashley hates it. Surveys in the United Kingdom show that one in five Brits have seen or felt the presence of a ghost, and 53% believe in psychic ability. The research coincides with Matt Damon's film, Hereafter, about a reluctant medium. Faye, now 13 years old, and Ashley, age 8, can relate to that. Stay-at-home mom Lynn says the first sign was when Faye started primary school. She used to tell me one of her friends was purple or the teacher was red. So one day I told her, no, darling, that boy isn't purple. She said, mommy, I mean the color around him. Now they both believe that Faye was recognizing auras, the glow which is said to radiate around a person. Ghostly sightings started when Faye turned 10 and appeared nearly every day. Once, they reported her bed being shaken by a frustrated female ghost. Another time, she said that she could feel the energy of an old woman against her back while showering. She even says that at times she could feel ghosts playing with her hair. Lynn says, how do you deal with something like that? She was terrified. I did start off thinking it might be attention-seeking, but you know your own children. She was shy and not a storyteller. In her skinny jeans and patent Doc Martens, Petite Faye today seems at ease with her powers, but her huge blue eyes still betray her fear during one of the most terrifying incidents. She says, I'd walked out of my bedroom, and there was a mirror at the other end of the hall. In my reflection, I saw a person's head on my shoulder. It was red. I was so scared. But now I understand that it's my granddad and that he is my spirit guide who's protecting me. Faye matter-of-factly goes on to relate how she encounters these unexpected visitors. She says, It's not like seeing something solid like a chair. It's like a glimpse of the person. Mostly I can sense something or feel the energy there and the picture and the details come into my head, like their name can pop into my head or how they died. If I close my eyes, I see their picture building up. It happens so quickly. I have all this information in a couple of seconds. I used to be really scared. I wouldn't like the dark, and I wouldn't like looking in the mirror in case I saw something. The double blow came when Ashley began to see ghosts as well. He refuses to discuss the idea that he might be psychic. His mother, Lynn, says, We'd been careful to keep everything that was going on with Faye from Ashley. I didn't want him to be frightened. Then, about a year ago, he refused to go into our conservatory and wouldn't go to the toilet alone. I asked him what the matter was and he told me, there's a head following me around. My blood went cold. How do you tell a seven-year-old that some people can see dead people? Lynn's husband, David, age 45, is clearly concerned and supportive, yet, like Ashley, prefers not to discuss the issue. But supernatural powers might run in the family. Both David's dad and Lynn's grandmother believed they saw spirits. Lynn says, Faye has tried to tell Ashley it's okay and happens to her, but he doesn't believe her. She's intrigued by it now, but he hates it and is terrified. Through talking to other mediums, Faye has learned to cope with the sightings, but Ashley is very much in denial. Instead, a friend who does distant healing called Theta Healing has focused on Ashley, asking that he doesn't see anything frightening. Lynn believes this has reduced the sightings, but says he still has what he calls bad thoughts. Faye, who has learned to channel her ability into learning Reiki healing, says, I can close down my chakras, points in the body from the head to the feet. 
You do it by thinking of those points as light bulbs, and you shut them off so you're closed to the spirits. I can also ask them to go away, and I can imagine a white light around me to protect myself. When it first started, I was seeing spirits every day, but now it isn't as often. Bay adds, I've only told one friend at school. She was fine about it and accepts it, but I wouldn't tell anyone else because I think they'd tease me. I'd be the witch girl. Lynn and Faye plan to write a book together on their experiences. They've also launched Facebook group Children with Spirit. Lynn says, One of my issues is that there's no real help out there for people like us. Talking to other psychic children has really helped Faye, so hopefully it can help others too. <laughs> 